Thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Brown. Our guest today is Anderson Police Chief Jim Stewart, and he just recently accomplished a pretty big deal. He's concluding five years in this position, and he's going to share with us some of the things that have happened over his tenure as Chief of the Anderson City Police Department. To begin with, Chief, looking back over your five years, what are some of the most things that you're most proud of and what you and your men and your women were able to accomplish? Well, um, thank you, Paul, uh, for inviting me and uh, speaking today. Uh, we've got a, a number of accomplishments that I'm pretty proud of. You know, my very first one, I think, uh, was the take-home vehicles for our officers um, uh, right when I um, took over the job. Um, I was on the command staff when Chief Brown was here when we got body cameras in 2011. Uh, 2016, uh, we added new body cameras, uh, have a few more features such as camera features and night vision, and we have those for all 103 officers on our staff. Um, we've increased the technology, um, replaced weapons, replaced our taser systems, um, evidence management systems, um, and it, it just keeps growing. Um, there's new technology every year. The camera specifically, you got into that game rather early as far as departments around the state were concerned. What was there about cameras and officers that kind of triggered the reasoning with the Anderson City Police Department, this is something we need to look at? Um, we were one of the first in the state um, really to capture evidence. Um, as we see now in 2018, people want to see things right now, right after it happens, as the officer saw it. Um, we kind of got in that on the forefront and, you know, it was also a training tool that helped our officers learn, it provided evidence um, for court. Um, when we do get a complaint, we're able to review it and either uh, use that in our training for good or bad to uh, improve. What's been the reception on the part of the officers to having to take a camera with them when they work? I can definitely remember back in 2011, nobody was crazy about it. Yeah. Now, um, just like Today here, I have my camera. It's a, it's another tool in our tool belt that we carry every day, and, and it captures everything we do. You said earlier that it, it it can help you, and it can also be something that, when a question comes up, now we have supposedly real time evidence of what actually happened. Is the both the community and the officers getting used to this, and whereas before maybe people would try and pull something on you, Correct. and now they know they can't? Well, and, and we started something probably um, six or seven years ago with internal affairs. Um, it was new to our department. We have an internal affairs officer who um, takes complaints, and, and a lot of people really just don't know that, I believe, but uh, his full-time job is to investigate that. And he also investigates our use of force um, reports and also our pursuit reports to make sure we're within policy. Um, when an incident happens, you're not just getting my camera, you're going to get all the cameras from every officer that's out there. So you have uh, many different angles, and especially with this new technology, the cameras we have now can switch to night vision. Um, and that's both good and a hindrance. Um, yeah. The good part is you can see at night what's going on. It's not dark, but you don't see it as the officer sees it as a dark scene. The other thing you talked about was the fact that the officers can now take their vehicles home. The parameters involved in that when you developed that policy was what? Well, number one reason is stay competitive um, with our other law enforcement agencies. Um, we, that is just a given now. Um, but you also, um, the city is accumulating a lot more out of that because you have the amount of officers that are um, coming to work while the shift's on duty yeah. and officers that are going home at the same time. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that the officers are involved in something uh, traveling to and from work. So we, the community, benefit from that. Right. And I, I'm one of the um, leaders of that. I, I say when we have a patrol car sitting in a neighborhood, um, whether you live in the city or the county, and right now our limit is Anderson County, but uh, it improves the overall crime for Anderson County and city. During your five years, what's been the one thing that has given you the most heartburn? Well, um, I think more than anything, maybe how uh, law enforcement is portrayed nationally. Um, I, I looked the numbers up and we answered about 70,300 calls last year. 
And Say that number again. 70,300 calls here in the city. Um, looking at the numbers, and I, I pulled that last year we had 20 internal affairs complaints that rose to the level of uh, for our investigator and inspector to uh, look into those. Um, 20 complaints out of 70,300 is really not that bad. Yeah, that's less than two, two a month, right? Yes. And we, of course, we have definitely supervisor um, complaints that our supervisors yeah. look into every day. Um, but, you know, of the serious nature that, you know, required an investigation. As police chief, what, what's the one thing that keeps you up at night, if anything does? Um, probably the safety of our officers, uh, making sure they have the uh, equipment they need. Um, city, we just are getting 11 new cars. We just replaced the tasers that we have with brand new tasers. We've replaced um, our weapons, upgraded them, um, making sure that they have the tools. The Crown Vic at one time was the police vehicle, and then for some reason Ford decided not to make it. Has it been more difficult to get a car up to standard once that Rolls Royce of police cars went away? Uh, it kind of started in 2008. Uh, we had our first Dodge Charger and uh, we won that through the uh, South Carolina Law Enforcement Network in a uh, challenge um, that Department of Public Safety put on. It was a really great feeling. I think all the chiefs and sheriffs in uh, Anderson Oconee County were eligible. Yeah. We had a key. My key started that car. That was our first one and we've stuck with the Charger um, pretty much since then and um, we use the V6 high output chargers and they're a lot better on gasoline. And also we see more SUVs within law enforcement now. How is that a benefit? SUVs are excellent vehicles. Uh, we also have about five Ford Interceptors that are all wheel drive and we use those especially in inclement weather. Um, SUVs are like a purpose vehicle, yeah. forensics, um, uh, criminal investigation division. You've been on the job five years. As you look into your crystal ball, what do you see happening in the next five? Our biggest is technology. Uh, we have just switched uh, this past July uh, to each officer has a Chromebook where they can do the instrument report in their car or come in your house or business to do that report. Each of our patrol cars are equipped with MiFi. Um, they also have the triple authentication um, software is required by FBI and SLED uh, for the sieges. Uh, our biggest um, challenge this coming year will be uh, being a pilot program um, with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, council has already approved and uh, we have printers and stands in transit as we speak. Uh, we will go to e-tickets as mandated um, by Governor Haley um, when she was in office that we had to go to e-tickets January 1st of this year. Currently we are putting those tickets in by website. but. Um, the technology, we want to be one of the forefront in the state, and uh, so we'll switch to e-ticket soon. So tell me how that's going to affect me in e-ticket compared to going home and having the uh, paper ticket. Well, just like uh, most corporations' businesses, everything is online now. You get stopped for speeding, uh, we're going to scan your license, scan your registration. We're going to put the court date in there and the charge. We're going to print the ticket out, give you a copy. While we're there, all your information has already been transmitted to SEDMB that quick. Uh, on the flip side of it, the court management system, such as our municipal court, they will download the tickets uh, for our municipal court. If you don't keep up with technology, you quickly get left behind? Correct. Uh, we, we went uh, almost 10 years ago to this kind of system with our instant reports. Uh, doing away with our handwritten reports, definitely. Um, it's a tool. Now that we're entering all this data, it's going to benefit our agency. It's going to benefit the state overall in capturing um, crash and traffic data, um, amount of tickets, um, being able to pull that readily up and share that information with all other agencies. With all this data so quickly available to you, are you able to track how your uh, crime statistics either go up or come down quicker? We, we do that in-house. Um, the lieutenant's daily reports that they submit to me daily, uh, we capture that data and we pretty much are watching the five major crimes. We do not track the petty crimes or simple assaults. Um, and right now we're tracking those and all of our crimes except white collar are behind. So 
Our violent crimes are down. Uh, we track crimes against women and children due to our grants that we have in-house. Uh, crimes against um, auto crimes, property crimes are both down. Is there a reason for that? Um, several factors. I, I think it's our partnerships here in the community. Um, we partner um, with the DEA having a task force member on there. We partner with the uh, ATF with a task force member. We partner in our community with a law enforcement community task force where we're involved with over 20 churches, maybe in the Anderson area. Um, it's the hard work of our officers, uh, the patrol officers, the investigators, the ones we have in narcotics, um, our school resource officers, you know, all working as a team. It continues to be important for your police officers to establish a personal relationship with these people that they're protecting. Absolutely. And, you know, as I went to roll call, and I've said this to our shifts many times, you know, and when we go out to work today, this may be the first time somebody's ever called the police department. And your impression that you make at that time is how they will view us the rest of uh, their life. Your tenure with the police department has been how many years now? I am in my 27th year with the police department. When you first walked through the doors and chief who would have been your chief when you first went? Jim Burris. Jim Burris. When you first went in there and you met him and you saw the department, at that point did you have any idea you would be there this long and that you would end up as being chief? I don't think I ever saw that. Um, it was just a fortunate set of circumstances that led to where I was at. And I had a lot of great mentors and a lot of great teachers that brought me here where I'm at. As we wrap this thing up, is there anything else you want to add that I have inadvertently forgot to bring up? Well, Paul, you know, um, the Anderson City Police Department is very special to me. Um, I, I want our agency to be the premier law enforcement agency in the upstate. And, you know, I, I'm very thankful to the council for uh, providing funding to help us get the equipment, keep us where we're at right now. Um, the citizens that stay involved and most of all the people that work for the Anderson City Police Department. Um, they're very loyal and it's one of the best teams in the state. Uh, and I would also tell you that we're hiring and would love for uh, you know people to come join our team. Well, you've done a great job. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. Congratulations on your uh, milestone of five years as head of the police department. We want to thank Chief Jim Stewart for spending a couple moments with us. We want to thank each of you for tuning in. And uh, be safe out there, Chief. Thank you.